Hello and welcome to another episode of Rapidly Aging Tech, a belated episode of Rapidly Aging Tech, and today we're doing something different. Today we're doing an Ashton style brown couch unboxery video, only instead of doing a brown couch we're doing a befuzzled red blanket unboxery. The reason I wanted to do this video is like a number of YouTubers, I went to a Goodwill and I found some interesting things. I actually have found interesting things at Goodwill a few times. But this time I decided, wait a second, I have something new in box. I should probably share it and then test it. So it's not just going to be opening a box and leaving. We will work with it. But we're going to start here. I also wanted to briefly mention that on the Retro Machines Facebook group, someone pointed out this on eBay. This is a mouse pad showing off Windows 98 from PC World. And I happened to win that auction. Not trying to rub it in people's face, but uh, just that I ended up getting it. And it is a nice little mouse pad. Though I really don't want to use it as my regular mouse pad because they tend to you know, get dirty and broke, break down where your wrist will be. But yes, I did get that. Now let's get on to what we were trying to do. By wow, the way, this camera is picking up everything. It looks a bit uh, ominous, like a murderous red cloud floating around this old optical drive. This is um, one item I picked up at Goodwill, and it was, in fact, in the box. Of course, it had been used at least once. This is an iOmega CD burner, CDRW. This is after iOmega moved away from using their own... 600 megabyte or so a disk format thing that they were doing and more well no, less adopted kind of standard uh, CD burner. So you can see it's a fairly fast drive. I think the fastest I've seen in the wild could have swore I had a 56x at one point one of my old computers but I could be wrong. Um, fairly standard. You can tell it's older because it still has the headphone jack out the front which I'm gonna be honest I have never actually used. I have never listened to any sound through the audio jack on a CD drive, which is interesting. It comes in this actually fairly substantial feeling grayish, purplish um, plastic case. It has a rounded top, so it's not really great for stacking things. And around the back, it's actually fairly interesting. It's USB 2.0 Type B, one of these standard cables. Looks like that. The whole point behind the Type B connector was to make sure that someone didn't take a, a du dual-sided Type A and plug it into the same source, and, um, causing a loop or some sort of goofy problem. Then it has RCA left and right for sound, to get sound out, um, which is kind of strange, but, but also cool, which is why I had to snag this. And it has a it's a, a mini DIN power connector. It looks a lot like a PS2 connector missing uh, one, uh, one pin. And of course a Kensington lock. Very cool device, I think. Now on the back we have this here. All the word gubbins. There we go. I have to steal a little bit from Ashens. He is the master of the couch review. This is the power adapter. There we go. Is it Asian power devices? Asian power devices incorporated. Huh. First time I've at least explicitly seen something they've made. And of course it's made in China. There are the technical bits and baubles. And what the power connector looks like. Let's see here. Can we focus? There we go. You rotate it there. And it has a ferrite choke on it, which is nice. So that's not the point of today's video is that thing. Primarily because while I'm bumping the mic, I found something 
else new in box and decided to leave it in the box to open it together. All I did was breach the seal to look inside to make sure that everything was there. So let's me, let me grab that. So I know what you're thinking. Who cares? Who cares about optical drives? Well, A, I do. <laughs> um, I think I've mentioned it in videos before. I believe in uh, each computer being as independent as possible, which in my mind necessitates an optical drive. Assume for uh, a situation where your internet access has failed or you can't uh, use another computer to format a jump drive to have the software or let's say the operating system you're trying to install, you kind of need an optical drive. Um, I rather would have them, I'd rather have them in the computer, but let's say you're one of those people with a, a fancy tower and you don't want to have, you know, obnoxious computery looking things in your computer. You want it to look like a glass monolith or something. This might be something you'd use. However, I don't think I've seen one of these outside of Goodwill. I'm sure they're out there, but I'm sure I imagine most people buy the little slimline, uh, completely USB powered optical drives, and not these full-sized optical optical drives that require power and then a data cable. Can you still buy them? I think I've seen them on uh, OWC for Apple side of things. But it's a nice thing to have, and I picked it up for $20, which I don't think is a bad deal considering it's a, a full-blown optical drive with an external, external case and power and whatnot. So let's take a peek at some of the features of this Memorex LightScribe DVD burner. So right off the bat, we can see that it's not the, uh, I don't believe it's the fastest DVD burn speed. Um, I thought they went up to at least 24. Of course, burn speeds, burn speeds are kind of misleading. CD burn speeds always have higher numbers, but um, as you go up from CD to DVD to Blu-ray, the one X for each of them actually moves more data. So a 20X DVD burner very well could be comparable or faster than a 52X CD drive. I don't remember the exact numbers, and I don't have my main computer on right now um, to quickly look up a chart for you because I'm in the middle of backing up and trying to save everything because one of my Velociraptors developed the click of death and now I'm panicking and firing files over the internal network and it's a nightmare and I don't know what to do in it. So I'll be inserting some sort of reference via t text in the video right around now or so. Anywho, so we got our speed there. It can do double layer. You can do DVD RAM style discs, I have no idea what those are, and up to 8.5 gigabytes for those um, special DVDs that can do that. So that's handy. USB 2.0 as kind of expected. Oh, the focus likes to see, can tell there's a face. Uh, light scribe, uh, which is not something I've used, but something I know about at the very least. And multi-format, those are supposed to be the different kind of DVDs. So it comes in a black and silver case, Memorex M's all over it, um, fairly standard looking drive for the most part, clearly much later than that iOmega CD burner we saw. It has a vertical stand. All right, just another reference to the multi-format stuff it can do. Comes with a copy of Nero. Nero is my old preferred burning software. Um, I used it on my XP machine because it came with it. I think it was Nero 5. I think it might have been the full version. But since Windows 7 more or less has built-in burning, they haven't actually used a burning software um, specifically in a long time, which is kind of sad. I should probably kick it back up again. And I'm sure that old burning software will work. Will, will it do DVDs or is that CD only? I don't remember. I think it might be CD only. But Nero 7, at least Essentials, must work. Hopefully it doesn't doesn't notice that I use it for something other than this uh, Memorex. Works with Windows Vista. 
I'm sure it does, but not today. And of course, the high speed USB certified label. And the model number. On this side, we see all the same performance uh, things again. DVD ROM, it'll read 16x. CD performance, it's a 4832.48. So it's a bit slower um, as far as its kind of standard activity than the iOmega, but CDRWs, it's much quicker. I've never used rewritable disks. Um, I went straight from using floppy disks. Um, into jump drives in high school. There were no CDRW stuff we did. And then we have a description of LightScribe whatnot, being able to put fancy labels on things just using your optical drive, which is kind of cool. All right, now it's just advertising the software suite, which uh, complete software suite puts you in control. Wasn't that nice? And it's all bubbly and whatnot, kind of a XP era thing. We look at this demonstration window. You can just tell what operating system they were expecting people to use with it. XP for the win. Another window, which is more classic mode. Either that or it might actually work on 98 or whatnot. And saving files and data to CD or DVD, kind of explaining to people, what can you use DVD burners for? And then we have a demonstration of double layer recording, which is kind of, it's kind of actually neat here. So we have the label, uh, more of the plastic, metal reflector, a die recording layer, spacers, another die recording layer is polycarbonate. So that's kind of an interesting feature. Um, I'm not sure whether they're trying to be technical and just interesting or whether they're just trying to baffle people with with science remember you can just say science and your argument is now perfect you cannot argue against it you must buy the product because science was used we used science real science for this product all right let's open her up I have popped the seal already but it's nice that it was unopened someone must have had this a long time and then just gave it to Goodwill because they never used it. Ooh. For enhanced performance, use with Memorex Media. Well, well, well. All right, so now we're inside. We have uh, this packing bubbly foam stuff. It's not the kind that breaks apart and gets all over. So we'll pull out the drive itself. that out of the way. So we'll take off one end, we'll take off another end, take it out of the plastic bag, and what do we have? It's a big Memorex M. We have a front, so it's nice. it is a nice silver and black scheme, and you can tell it is of course a later, well I don't know if any DVD drives had the, nope, some of them do have the audio jacks on them, Though I've noticed some of them have very poor um, isolation if the drive is working. You can hear it working through the, at least through the sound card if you've hooked it up using an old audio cable straight to the sound card. But this is a later one. It doesn't possess that. Or they just expected, well, it's an external drive. Let's not even deal with it. The button open and close and the activity light. Very simple. And not a bad color scheme. Not sure what I think about these lumpy things on there. And Rex label on the side again. These little divots, I believe, are for the mounting of the stand. And of course, this these uh, bumps everywhere. And then on the back, we have our standard USB 2.0 Type-B connector. We also have, and this is interesting, an activity light that glows red if you're attached to a USB 1.1 port and green if it's attached to a 2.0 port. It'll work, but it's going to tell you it's, you're running at reduced speeds, which that's handy. I'm not sure, looking around, I think 
I think all my computers are USB 2.0. I don't think I have a single 1.1 USB port in the house. Hmm. Another mini DIN power connector. Only this one's a little different. This one looks more like a um, S video cable, which is strange. I'm not. <laughs> you think you'd want to make your power connector very different from uh, other types of cables, just in case. But you know, can't make everything idiot proof. Then we have serial number and an on-off switch, which the iOmega lacks. I like a nice um, hard on-off switch. As far as the bottom goes, it's just uh, the Memorex part number or whatnot, some little rubber feet which don't feel like they're melting or anything from age, because it's not quite old enough to do that. And then a warranty void if removed sticker. I'm not sure if there's a screw there or what. Um, this case doesn't seem to explicitly have screws holding it together. So maybe that is the one thing that can uh, pull it apart, or it's just a plastic piece that passes through and it'll pull the sticker apart if you if you crack this thing open. Not sure, but there's some venting on the back. If this had screws, I would just pop it open, but I really don't want to break any plastic clips unnecessarily. So that's that. Yeah. And now in the box, you'll see that there is a, a little white halvesy box inside, which we'll pull out, revealing an empty box. Get that out of the way. And crack this guy open. Yeah, kind of the usual suspects these sorts of things. We have our power connector, which I'll just leave in the bag because I don't really need to examine that. It has its goofy S-video-ish connector and a power brick with the standard um, two-pin cable connector, which is probably over here. Yep, that'd be this cable. Got your USB 2.0 A and B with a ferrite choke. And then we have the stand, which I will take out. So it's got another of this. This is actually a metal sticker. So all these M Memorex M's are metal stickers, which is nice. This might have been an expensive unit when it first came out. And it's got what I suspected the plastic nubbins there, which means we line this guy up then it works. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. Metal M's everywhere. It's on site. Great. So you can find good things at Goodwill. And that something like this would be handy for most folks if you're moving towards your um, computers that are less than computers because they don't have optical drives. Because you could have one of these on the side for all your CD, DVD needs. Of course, I have a Blu-ray drive in my main machine because I can watch Blu-ray movies on it. Because why not? So we have the Memorex um, Nero 7 Essentials, the Memorex Suite, which hopefully will work on other things. It probably will. And a sample to give you one disc with light scribe to burn so you can play around with it. Isn't that handy? And then a software guide, a manual on how to use all the different software bits. That's thoughtful. That's more than what they give you with Windows now. And the hardware guide. Oh dear, it's a fold out. Look at all the technical bits and bobbles. If you really had no idea about computers or anything, this would be kind of handy, I think. Now, maybe it'd be still too technical to wrap your head around, but there you go. 
So we have done unboxed it. But does it work? All right, here we are. We have the drive hooked up to power. It is powered off. The reason I have it around this way is because we're going to plug this into the machine and then we're going to see uh, the, the data light to see how uh, if it the difference between uh, well I won't see the difference because I only have USB 2.0 or 3.0 we'll put it in 3.0 and see if it sees full speed so that's one thing we're going to do so right now we are sitting in front of the Windows 7 machine the main machine um, the one that has one of the drives making the click of death however it's not always consistent right now I don't hear the click <clears throat> in case you're wondering it was literally the morning of Friday the 13th where I first heard it. So I've cloned both hard drives and I've made backups of all the important files um, that I have that have been shot over to the Power Mac G5 over Ethernet through my internal network. And I've also moved a bunch of files over to a large jump drive, Alexar 128 gigabyte USB 3.0. This thing was on sale. So now I'll just log into Windows, then turn the power switch on, and then plug in. So let me put in my password here. All right, login's begun. Oh yeah, that's Windows 7. <laughs> so now let's get things plugged in. Right now Windows has booted up. Let's get her plugged in here. And we'll turn the power switch on. Oh. So its power light is on. USB made the, uh, Windows made the, the Bing noise for new hardware. And we are green, so it recognizes full USB 2.0 speed. Wasn't that handy? Now, because I don't have anything worth burning right now, but we'll at least put pop in a CD and see if uh, everything plays. I don't think we really need to test the full burning capability, at least not in this video. Oh, and in case you're wondering why this is, desk is so unfinished, um, when we when I moved into this place, um, this desk has just always been in kind of rough shape. Um, the window over here tends to be, if, if the wind hits it right, it can sort of try to blow in some water. So there can be some water that will get in. Um, and so I think that's happened in the past. That's why it's kind of rough. As far as all these other cables snaking around, I mean, there's uh, just a network cable just kind of going across the room. This was an experiment I'm doing with uh, I have some CB radio stuff, which I think I've pointed to before. Anywho, let's get this thing going. Pops out nice and clean. And I'll put in the CD here. I'm going to be perfectly honest. I've never liked um, having CDs in vertical. So I probably won't keep it in this configuration. But there we go. Now let's see if Windows can fully see it. Well, Power DVD opened up. That was Gregorian chant, if you're not aware of that, from the Fraternity of St. Peter. So, yep, it's definitely working. Of course... It was a bit loud there for a bit. <laughs> so yes, it fully functions. It was kept nice and safe in the box. The box really didn't have much damage. So if you're a Goodwill and you see something like this, or even the iOmega, which I think might be more interesting to you folks being older, um, snag it you might end up needing it especially if you're going for these for a computer that doesn't look like a computer so that's been that hopefully a quick video i really don't know how long i've been rambling hopefully i can edit it down to something simple um yes my main machine is still up and running but that click of death has popped in a few times so i'm just going to uh, do my best to save it i do have some interesting drives coming to replace the two velociraptors uh, if you don't remember, the Velociraptor is a 10,000 RPM drive. It was the f I had the final one terabyte versions that they ever made. Those came out, I think, about 2012 or so. And then they more or less abandoned the line. Will they come back in the future? 
I hope so, but I don't think so. Those drives, when I got them, this machine was built in, what, late 2015, like December 2015. And as a result, those Velociraptors were used. They were not new old stock, they were used. And I think they may have been, someone pointed out, they may have been the laptop version since they came without their heat sinks. I got them because they were a good chunk cheaper. I figured the heat sinks were removed. Anyway, they could have been abused, but they've gone this far. They've gone, what, nearly, nearly two years, and only one of them, I think, has the problem. But I'm replacing them with a solid-state drive. I finally buckled. I have never installed a solid-state drive on a USB, not, sorry, a solid-state drive on a SATA 3 bus, always on SATA 2 or IDE, not even SATA 1. And then as the second drive, um, I got one of the new fancy Western Digital Gold drives, which should outperform, in most cases, the Velociraptor anyway, due to advanced data densities and whatnot. So that is coming up in another video. And as you can see, even though I do have a Blu-ray drive and it's a burner and it's the um, uh, MO disc kind that can really um, burn the fancy Blu-rays, I still have a Firewire um, Sony DVD burner that I also got at Goodwill and had to find the power supply on eBay, along with my USB zip drive, a uh, USB 3.0 card reader, and this guy. This is a rotary phone, however it is, um, has a rotary mechanism, but it still dials using the, the new standard dialing rather than the old pulse um, dialing that rotary phones do. So this will work um, with Magic Jack, which I use. It can dial out through Magic Jack. It will work on phone systems that don't support old rotary phones anymore. Most traditional phone lines do, um, but this is a nice thing. Anyway, I've gone far, far enough. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you later, hopefully with something of interest. Like this computer, which literally has a cup holder.